Hello, my name is Phil Rue. I'm the visitation pastor at Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Olympia, and welcome to this time of devotion. This thing dominates us. You turn on the TV, you open a news source, you greet a neighbor from a safe distance, of course, and it's there, it's on our lips, it's in our ears. We can't get away from it at all. Coronavirus, COVID-19, an invisible parasite that most of us, we think, have not encountered personally, but which has affected all of us personally. We're under its thumb, we object, but it does no good to object. The thing is still here. Without our permission, it has become a major part of our lives and it's just not going away and that gets to us. Now, such life-altering things that happen to us really isn't that unusual. It happens all about us day by day. For some of us, it takes just a doctor's visit maybe, or a sudden change in the weather that destroys uh, maybe life's work. Uh, a Sunday drive goes awry, a slip in the tub, and suddenly life is different. It's altered, maybe even radically changed. But seldom is such a phenomenon so widespread, a pandemic we call it. And life is on edge then for all of us, all of us. And of course the natural recourse is for us to try to bend life back to what it was before, the way it was before. But we just can't, it won't do it. We've watched, of course, the various responses in this. Some of them are incredibly uplifting and, and brings out the best in us. And some of it is frightening. We lift up our medical personnel. They're heroes. And we find people looking for ways to serve and help their neighbors. And that's uplifting. And then there are demonstrators, some who go out without their masks or any protection, feeling unaffected, feeling cheated, feeling angry. And others among them may be feeling vulnerable and frightened, not willing to just lie down and let it take over our lives. Our reactions run the gamut, of course, as part of the human story of life together. And there's something about me that wants to totally ignore all of this as we come together in a devotional way. Let's talk about something else, something that diverts our mind for a while. Diversion is good. But another, and another part of me wants to uh, offer something to fix it, explain it in some hopeful way, give some assurances. God will see us through. We're all going to land on our feet. It's going to be okay. And I ache for that assurance. I want to hear those words. I, I grab them when I can. I look for promises, some word, that everything will be okay. But at least for me, that's not being totally honest. And I can't do that. I need, to, uh, I need to embrace the whole situation. I need to embrace all the affected people and understand them and all the possibilities out there. I need to be aware that they are there. Hope for the best, the old saying says, and prepare for the worst. Maybe that's part of it. But it's here I find that scripture encounters me with sustaining words at the places where I'm most vulnerable and helpless. Over and over again, the scriptures, uh, in the scriptures, when God somehow breaks into our human situation and encounters someone, though you hear the words, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I like that. I like it because, first of all, it, it, it acknowledges what's going on inside of me. I am afraid. 
and it proclaims to me that there is something more, something beyond the fear. Don't let the fear dominate and control. When God encounters us with promises, it's not to sugarcoat what's going on. It's not to lift us up out of life's challenges and difficulties and threats. But we find it's to sustain us in the midst of them. That's why I like the Psalms. The Psalms share the words of real people who are going through real issues and have honest sharing coming out of their words. Listen to the witness of Psalm 31, which is attributed to David. Be gracious to me, O, God, o Lord, for I am in distress. Anne Lamont says in the three prayers that are offered, the first word is what the psalmist just gave us, and she, she says it as help. Help, I'm empty. And the psalmist uses these words to describe his situation that is just harsh and hard. Grief, sorrow, sighing, misery, waste away. My eyes wastes away. My eye wastes away from grief. My soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery. My bones waste away. Pouring out life as it is. I don't know what it is. He doesn't describe that. But in the midst of it, he, he shares what he did. He says, into your hand I commit my spirit. I trust in you. You are my God. My times are in your hands. Whatever comes, whatever is, I trust the goodness of God who's going to be there with me and for me. So these words of encouragement are not just be brave and buck up words, but they're words that grow out of this psalmist's own human experience. And he encourages us with them. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. The, psalm, the psalmist is telling us and reminding us that in our distress, God is faithful. We don't know how things turn out. I don't know how things turned out for the psalmist. But God is faithful, and that's the message that's being shared with us today, even in these times. Jesus tells his disciples, and these are good words for us to hold as we go, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. Amen. Thanks be to God. May it be so. Amen.